Oh, check you out. Aren't you a cypress sore eyes? That's not so bad, but I think we can do better. Welcome back to the joy of welding, everyone. This segment is all about diving into our Weld App community and helping those that are struggling in their welding career. If you have some struggles and you need some help, post those pictures and videos inside the Weld App and we'll be sure to help answer those. Let's take a look at this week's student. This week's student is Daniel Welds 25. Daniel's doing a fantastic job in there. He's working on some 10 gauge stainless steel with 16 inch TIG wire, but at about 115 amps. Taking a closer look at these welds, you've got a good size weld on there, but there's not all that beautiful color that we're looking for. And we've got our really telltale evidence at the toe of our weld when we zoom in that this may be a little too cold. Now, I love my motto, weld hot, weld fast, and blast the gas, and that's all you've got to do to get this weld lined out. Let's set up to make this weld. Before we can just dive into welding, let's take a look at the business end of what we're doing today. We've got us a Series 9 torch. That's a small guy, doesn't have a flex head on it, and you can get away with a little bit of flex in it, but be careful, it may just break. We've got a number eight quartz cup on here. That's just gonna help us see a little bit better through our arc shots and stuff today. We're running 332 E3 tungsten, all of them, plenty of them ready to go as far as sharpened up. We've got some 16th inch TIG wire, just as you do, my good friend, and we're gonna be utilizing a foot pedal remote today. I think this is gonna set us up for success. I'm not sure what quite you're using in their lab there, but this is what we're gonna to use today. I've got my bottle of argon turned on, and we're running about 30 CFH on that argon flow. Some might say that's a lot, but you know what my motto is. Let's look at this machine. Let's get this Typhoon 230 powered on, and I do love this machine. It is an absolute stallion. What a unit. We've got everything plugged in as far as our TIG torch into the negative, our ground into the positive for DC negative, our gas is plugged in the front, and our remote is nice and secure. We've got our pedal remote set. We've got 332 tungsten. We are gonna be running that high frequency start, which I believe we should all be trying to practice with this because we have a lot more control over our post flow and keeping that weld a little bit cleaner with our high frequency start and setting up that post flow at the end. You could do this with live lift, even scratch start, but you've gotta be quick about it. We've got our pre-flow set, our start amps at 15. We're gonna be running that 105, excuse me, 115 amps, which should be just okay for this 10 gauge material because you could get away with murder on this stuff. Now, we're gonna keep our post flow at about 10 seconds because I pay for this gas and that's gonna be plenty for what we're working on. Now we have our two sets of coupons here, one stainless steel and one carbon steel, both about eighth of an inch thick or close to 10 gauge material. We've got everything set up. We're just gonna go ahead and glove up. Don't forget to put on your gloves because that high frequency start can jump out and bite you if you're a little bit wet, like we've got some rain in here today. Uh, so got our Lincoln hood on, we're ready to weld. The thing that I really wanna point out if you're not already doing so is getting a really close to this weld. My seat is a little tall, but that's gonna be okay. But we do wanna make sure that we are eye level with this weld. Remember, if you're eye level with it, your weld will respect you and it'll come out a lot better. As we get closer, we're gonna work our way across, but I do wanna get a little closer look at this dry run before we get started. Along with being comfortable, you may just end up snipping a little bit of this wire because it's all floppy and we won't need all of it. But what we want to do is make sure that that wire stays nice and in front of us, in front of our torch, and that torch stays at a nice 45 degree angle all the way across. That means we're in between halfway between the bottom and top plate. Now I like to kick my torch back like this to help my vision a little bit and help to be able to see. However, we don't want to lean this torch too far back so that we start balling up this wire too much. We still want to keep our work angle still pointed at 45 degrees here and our travel angle no more than 10 degrees back. And we're gonna stay as close as possible, just, just pausing and giving it a little bit of that wire to help satisfy that puddle as we come across. This is a dainty little process. And at 105, 115 amps, we should be able to get across this plate fairly quickly. The trick to welding any type of stainless steel for me is that we wanna make sure that we weld as fast as that puddle will allow us to carry. If that means that we need to turn our amperage up so that it'll carry faster, then we'll do so. But let's see how this runs at 115. We're gonna ease into that foot pedal until we start to see that puddle form. Now we're all the way down and we know we can start doing our travel. This 115 amps doesn't seem too shabby. 
We don't want to carry too much metal. We still want to watch those toes wet in there. We're going to just nice, slow, and steady. This TIG torch with this setup is a nice little paintbrush for us as we just move forward, pause, and dip our filler metal into the front edge of that puddle. Once your torch angle starts to change as you work across the plate, you may opt to backing off your torch, letting that post flow do its thing, and changing that torch angle. As you can see as we work across, I have that tendency to want to lean back. So we're going to change our angle on our plate and just keep welding. It's okay to get uncomfortable and reset. Remember, we don't want to avoid tie-ins. We want to embrace them as we're going to be making a lot of those in our career. This is a pretty sluggish puddle. I will say that we could use a little bit more speed, especially since we're adding this 16th inch diameter TIG wire into that puddle and it's hungry for some amperage as well. And it's stealing a little bit of our travel speed in our puddle. Let's take a closer look at the weld we just made. So I do believe that this weld performed just OBKB. It was pretty good, especially when we start to see these golder colors. The heat affected zone of your weld and the colors of the weld really do tell you a lot of fantastic information about it. We want to see a nice, even heat affected zone. By that, I mean not too much. It shouldn't be creeping out really far. That's telling you, you're going far too slow. We don't want to be too far outside of that. We can see our tie in right here where that heat affected zone kind of paused. And you can see as we start each weld, we get that gold color and then we start to see those purples and blues. What that's telling me is that I even need to speed up a little bit or it's just too warm. I'm spending too much time in one location, which is okay. We're not getting terrible results, but if we wanna see that beautiful color all the way across, we have to think of how metal really likes to react when it comes to stainless. It wants you to spend as little time in one spot as possible. And while overheating stainless is a huge problem, amperage may not be the problem. It may be the time you spent sitting in one spot. So what we're gonna do to see if we can't change something on this carbon steel before we switch over to our stainless steel. And again, the only reason why I'm using this lovely piece of carbon is because it's a little cheaper and easier to get a hold of around where I'm at. And it really does translate into stainless steel, no problem. Wow, what a nice weld. Ooh, that angle right there is, hmm. Just those little dippy dimes, I love them. Now, the only thing that we're gonna do different is we're just gonna go ahead and turn the amperage up from 115, let's just turn it up 10 and see what 125 is like. I really want y'all to get a good look at this art shot. So I'm gonna have to work around my camera here and I think that it's gonna, it's gonna be just okay. Let's see what we can come up with. Oop, I better turn my settings to the appropriate ones. All right. Now we should be able to boogie on down. Torch angle at 45 degrees. Ease in. I'm all the way down on this foot pedal already. Ooh, seems as if I'm having a hard time. Now, it's a funny little problem that I'm having. I actually did dip this piece of plate in a puddle outside to cool it off. And there's probably some trapped water in this T-plate, really not letting anything tie in underneath. How awesome. It's really not helping at all, or my cause or point for saying that turning up our amperage is going to be better. But hey, we learned a good lesson today. Don't dip it in water if you're trying to continue to weld. Let's look at how bad that was. That weld absolutely did not want to cooperate with us. I mean, let's just compare this backside here. That's how we started. And then we just dipped this little thing in a puddle to cool it off. And we can't get a puddle on there to save our life. So just take it from me as an example. Don't cool off your plate in the water. You're gonna trap some water and it's gonna be a big problem. So just go ahead, take the time and let it cool or just weld the other side and not worry about cooling it off. You'll be able to just weld a little faster. Now that the plate's heated up a little and I'm able to get it really close, this puddle is still fighting me, but 
It's still working. It's working just okay. We'll back off our foot pedal there, allow our post flow to do its thing. Mm, gotta love that post flow. Yummy stuff. And then we can take another look at that well, and it is getting better. We've got some more of that gold color towards the end of the plate now. Now again, this was a really tough well to make because of that water. Now we're just gonna go ahead and switch over to our stainless coupon and definitely avoid any of that moisture. Let's go ahead and just put a weld on here at 125 amps and see if we can't boogie across this T-plate and get gold all the way across. All right, let's give this a go. Oh yeah, we're really having a good time getting across this. Oh, it looks like my power is trying to go out because of this weather. This 125 on that stainless steel is letting us move a little quicker. And I do love that. I'm having a hard time to see with these old eyes being so far away. I hope y'all got a good view of it. Let's back off and see how we've done. Now, if we take a closer look at this piece of stainless steel, we still have a lot of beautiful colors on here. We've got a lot of the purples and blues and gold towards the end. Now we are trying to achieve this beautiful gold color. And while our gas stays covering over top of it, it remains gold. But as we get out of our shielding, it seems to want to get a lot bluer. And some of those companies that you may work for, they don't love seeing that. So we can do a couple things. We have a couple options here. And I think it's going to be quite an easy one. What's going to end up happening is I can either turn up my amperage or I can turn down my amperage and I could try to put less heat into the plate, but we've got to be concerned about spending too much time in one area so that can cook it either way. Too much amps is just too hot, too slow, is just going to cook it in one spot. So the other option is travel speed, but our travel speed is only as fast as our puddle will let us go. So typically we need a hot, amperage for a fast travel speed, but there is still a limit to that. Now I think we have all of our variables as far as amperage and travel speed is pretty good. But what I don't love is that we're escaping our shielding gas. So what do we do? Let's switch out to a flooding cup. All we'll do is we'll take our little torch boy here, take the head off of it. Now again, we had a number eight cup on there before. Now we're gonna switch to this BBW cup, which is a 12. That should give us a lot more significant gas coverage in that weld joint, as well as giving us some stick out that we could use a little bit further out so that maybe we can see a little bit better. But that wasn't the problem. We just want that gas coverage. So let's do our best and see what we get. Again, trying to move as fast as this puddle will let me. Back off our foot pedal. Allow for the post flow. Wow, the proof is in the pudding right there. Now, would you take a good look at that right there? That's what we were looking for. You can see that we've got this nice silver color all the way across that weld from using that bigger cup compared to these where we have the oxidation at the beginning of the weld as we escape our shielding gas. Again, the only thing that we changed here is putting a, a bigger cup size on there because I love my motto, weld hot, weld fast and blast the gas. And if you're not gonna turn the gas up, you can definitely make do with a flooding cup to help share the love. Now we are gonna weld this other side here Oh man, I do love that. That looks lovely, lovely. We're gonna wait to weld this other side. We're not gonna do that one problem that we did last time and put it in the water. We're just gonna be patient. Now that our parts cooled off, we can just see if we can't get from one end to the other, making this whole thing nice, pretty, shiny, and gold. I'm gonna do my best to get the arc shot of the whole thing. <laughs> As you see, they've been a little bit blurry. And I also gotta be aware that this machine does have a lot of fans to keep it cool and make sure it's running at optimal performance those fans can blow a little bit of air and just kind of give a little bit of an issue. And we don't want that. So make sure that we have any windows, bay doors, or fans on our machines, not blowing anywhere near us because that could affect our welds as well and keeping the post flow on that tungsten tip. Let's boogie.
Soon as we're all the way down, we're going to attempt to move as fast as possible. I'm being really quiet now because I have to focus. Oop, need to reposition. Well, this really is challenging whenever you have these cameras in the way. The torch angle starts to lean too far back. I don't want that. Oh well. It's okay to reposition and get the right angle for the job because we don't want to mess these welds up. Post flow. Not the prettiest weld I've ever made, but it's shiny. As you can see, we have a nice gold weld all the way across. We did have to make the two little stops right here and right here to help reposition. Now, this isn't the best weld I've made, but the things I want to point out is the coloration, whereas our good friend in the app didn't have this nice shiny color. It was closer to that rose gold and getting really close to gray and kind of burnt up. And I do believe that has a little bit to do with that amperage and maybe the gas coverage that you're working with. Now, we can see the toes of this weld are tied in, tied into the sides of either end of our fillet weld. You don't have that little cold lap happening in the corners. And that's the one thing that I really wanted to correct with your weld, sir. Your weld size was perfect. The toes, not so much tied in, and that coloration was just creeping into the gray side, and we want to keep it as gold as possible because some of those companies, they don't love seeing the color anyway, and they're going to want to take it off. But it's a lot easier to take off if you do it right. Now, this isn't my best work that I've seen, and I'm not going to leave you on this today. I want to at least put something down that I'm happy with. Fantastic. That's a little bit better. Still have a little wonky on a restart there in the middle, but I wouldn't mind taking that weld home and showing it to my mom. Well, Daniel, I sure hope that helped you on your journey as you weld those stainless steel T-plates. That 10 gauge material is very forgiving, but all you need is the appropriate amperage for your travel speed and enough gas coverage to satisfy that weld. If anyone else has any questions on their welds, be sure to post those pictures or videos inside the weld app and tag me, Austin Hargett, and I'll try to do my best to put it here on the joy of welding. Thanks for watching, everyone.